So I'm now going to talk about probably one of the coolest and most groundbreaking things that we've done in NDI 5, which is NDI Bridge. First of all, it's important to understand that there are three modes to N NDI Bridge. The first is local mode, and I'm going to talk about that in a second to help expand on what all the other modes can do. Then there's in, you can act as a host, which means people join you, and then you can choose to join a host, which is how you make it work over the, the wide area network or between local networks. So let's talk, start by talking a little bit about local mode. And what local mode does is it just works on your local network. And you might think, well, what, what does that do? Why, why is that even interesting? And I think that you know, I will show you now why that is actually really valuable and very powerful on its own. So let's start by thinking about a network. And you know, let's imagine this hypothetical network with about eight, 10 video sources on it. And what NDI Bridge is it, you run it, you put it in local mode, and you say go. And it goes out, and it finds all of the sources on your network. And it sees them all. What it then does is it takes all of those sources and says, OK, these are what's on my network. I'm going to advertise all of those sources again onto the local network. So if you will, it is, it is acting, acting much like a proxy. It can take sources on your network, and it can put them back out. Now you might think this is just never going to work, because there could be hundreds or thousands of sources on your network. How are you going to bring them all through, make them all available again? That's going to take thousands of, you know, thousands of streams of decoding, thousands of streams of network sending. But what NDI Bridge does is it's very intelligent about how it uses bandwidth. So across all of its modes, but in local mode, but like all the other modes, it will only take the sources that are actually being used on the network at that moment. So when you connect to one of the outputs of NDI Bridge, it knows that you're connected to it. And so then it connects to the upstream inputs and starts receiving the, the video. And so it is only using the bandwidth as it is actually needed. And what it does is not just send video through, but it actually can work. It, it, knows the, it, it will send all of the metadata through. So you can use it with KVM. You can use it with PTZ control. It fully supports you know, our tally and all of the other metadata that we have per frame and per stream, which means that it's taking cameras, it's taking video sources on the network, and making them available again. Now, on its face, and we've not even gone into the details, this alone is incredibly useful, because this will act as a proxy to get you more bandwidth. Imagine that you had a iPhone, one of our iPhone apps. You know, that's on wireless network. And you have 100 people in your company. You don't want all 100 people in the company connecting directly to that iPhone. That clearly won't work. The wireless network will fall apart very quickly. But you can use something like NDI Bridge to give your whole network far more bandwidth access to that camera. So if you're running it on a high performance machine with a 10 gigabit Ethernet, now you can have your whole company connect to that machine. And you only have a single connection back to your iPhone camera. Now you can have 10 cameras, and you're starting to really see big benefits in terms of bandwidth. You can have cameras that are remote, where you only have limited bandwidth to them. And you can use all of this as a proxy that can then make that source available to everybody else. So NDI Bridge local mode works very efficiently even for that. But it can do much more, because we don't just allow it to send data through and proxy data. It will act and fully transcode all of those sources into NDIHX, which means that um, you can now take a lot of NDI sources, and you now have a way to turn them into NDIHX. And we do this not just in H.264, but we actually fully support HEVC as well. So now, every NDI source, whether that is the camera that you have today, whether that is the converter you have today, whether NDIHX or not, have the ability to run with NDIHX. That means that each of your applications all have the ability to put out NDIHX. So if you're just, say, on a VPN now, connected to a remote site, you can actually run NDI bridge in local mode. And the, the data that's transferred over that, that connection, you can have everything that NDI does, and it's at lower bandwidth, which is quite remarkable. So now, let's take it a step further and think about connecting two machines. What you're going to have is you are going to have one of them in host mode. And what that means is now that machine is hosting connections from other people. And then you have your second machine 
in join mode because it's going to join the host. So when you run it in this way, everything I described to you about how it works in local mode will just work over the, you know, the network, which means that your NDI sources on one end of the connection are seen on the other network. So the sources on the host connection are seen on the, the, the join connection. And all of the sources that are on the join side of the connection are seen on the host connection. So this is fully bidirectional, so that the sources are seen just freely across both networks. So if you will, and now this is where the name comes from, it bridges these two networks and allows video from one network to be freely seen on the other with all of the capabilities of NDI. So this is you know, very exciting. And quite honestly, the amount that NDI Bridge you know, does is, is just going to blow your mind. And the number of new workflows that it, it allows is, is just you know, really staggering.